I do too. Oh, it's just fantastic! <laughs> Play along and guess which values have changed or stayed the same next time on Antiques Roadshow. Tonight at 7 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. I love Frontline. I think the things they do are always surprising, controversial, but controversial in the best possible way, meaning subjects people are afraid to touch. I think for me it was opening my mind to things I would not have been exposed to ordinarily. I love independent lens, stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. It's the kind of stuff you turn on late at night and you're so happy you watched it. You think, I so changed because of this program. And that's something that only PBS can do. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. PBS Online. Share. Tweet. Watch. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. As the wet season ends, the one constant in the outback emerges, life. From the life of those who have called this place home for generations. In today's world, everything's under the threat of being destroyed. Here we have something that hasn't been touched. To the ones trying to save the future. These big, beautiful creatures, they're magnificent souls. Every life in the Kimberly is unique. Every morning and every afternoon, you'll see them and you'll hear them. Coming in August to Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... AARP in Phoenix thinks today should be your day. So get active and help keep Phoenix in motion or get involved in improving your community. Take on today and every day. Learn how at aarp.org slash phoenix. I'm Susan Linkus of the Linkus Group, a fee-based registered investment advisor specializing in financial planning, investment management, insurance strategies, and more. LincusGroup.com, investing for life. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. A push to increase research into veteran suicides, all in the hope of saving lives. And made in America, the president celebrates companies based in the U.S., including a firm right here in the Valley. Plus, going once, going twice, sold. How you can get your hands on a piece of Tempe history. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Emily Wirtz. And I'm Amanda Mason. Thank you for joining us. Legislation is needed to help assess the veteran suicide crisis. Well, today, family and friends of U.S. Army Ranger who took his own life are making a call for action. They hope Arizona will join 22 other states that have a law requiring yearly statistical data on veteran suicide. Army Ranger Antoine Castaneda joined the Army after 9-11 and served multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. After he came home from the Army, he suffered with PTSD and I believe a traumatic brain injury, and he sought help constantly through the Phoenix VA. Smith said she started noticing signs of withdrawing in 2013, around two years before his death. And I would go into the house and all the shutters were closed on the window, and that was never him, and I'd walk around and start opening the shutters, and he would go behind me and start closing them. Uh, sometimes he wore his hat, uh, his military hat with his sunglasses in the house. Addressing veteran suicide is to get a handle on the problem. And you can't really get a handle on the problem unless you know how large the extent it is. And in researching this, we found that there's no uh, consistent statistical data on veteran suicide. According to ASU research released last November, veterans are four times more likely to commit suicide compared to non-veterans in Arizona, which was a strong contrast to the VA's 2016 research that showed a 22% higher incidence of suicide among veterans. I mean, that's something that we want to do is breaking that stigma that it's weak to seek help. We want people to know that there's resources, that there's people there, that everyone is here to support veterans. Castaneda leaves behind a lasting memory. Antoine was an excellent father. He was a stay-at-home dad. He would cook breakfast for the two little girls every morning, Vanessa and Viviana, and he loved his little girls. 
Arizona Representative Jay Lawrence says it is up to us to take care of our veterans. He encourages everyone that if they know a veteran and have not seen them for a few days, give them a call or knock on the door to check up on them. The next few days are going to be dangerously hot across much of the state. The National Weather Service has issued an excessive heat warning with temperatures expected to come close to 120 degrees. With such high heat expected, make sure you're staying safe. Drink plenty of water throughout the day. Schedule any outdoor activities for early morning or after sunset. And wear light, loose-fitting clothing. The excessive heat watch will be in place until 8 o'clock Wednesday evening. And the weather right now is 112 degrees. We're going to take a look at weather across the valley. You can see again in Phoenix, 112, Glendale, 113, and Scottsdale, 112. But let's take a look at what tonight's going to look like. At 7 p.m., it's going to be around 103 degrees, and it's going to get a little lower around 11 p.m. at 94. And then you'll see at 3 a.m. and 7 a.m., 87 degrees. We'll have your seven-day forecast coming up soon. And with temperatures skyrocketing here in Arizona, many people are keeping cool by getting out. But before you book your next trip, watch out for travel scams. The Arizona Attorney General's Office has some tips to help you avoid vacation nightmares. Travel with companies and sites you trust. Even better, book directly through the hotel or resort whenever possible. Read the fine print. Some travel companies charge fees that may not be included in the advertised price. Check out the reviews. If a vacation rental doesn't have photos or reviews, it could be a scam. And know your refund options. Get the refund policy in writing if one is offered. The City of Phoenix has more than 40 stations set up citywide to help you beat the heat. It's part of the We're Cool campaign. You can pick up water bottles and spend some time in the air conditioning. The Salvation Army's Red Shield Survival Squad also has 13 heat relief stations open across the valley from 11 to 5 each day of an excessive heat warning. Check out our website cronkitenews.azpbs.org for a map of all open heat relief stations. Once again, the president has uh, faith in the intelligence that suggests and maintain that Russia was involved in the elections. However, it's also important uh, that that same uh, information concludes that it had no impact on the election. The White House is doubling down on its stance on Russian election meddling. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders says again today that it's important to distinguish between Russian meddling and the alleged collusion with the Trump campaign. This comes after President Trump walked back on a statement last week, initially implying that he trusted Russian President Vladimir Putin's word over findings from U.S. intelligence agencies. President Trump getting heated on Twitter once again, this time calling out the president of Iran. The tweet came after Iranian leader cautioned Trump about engaging in what he said could be the mother of all wars. President Trump responded in nearly all caps saying, never ever threaten the United States again or you will suffer consequences, the likes of which few throughout history have ever suffered before. Earlier this year, Trump ordered increased sanctions on Iran and pulled the U.S. out of an international deal meant to limit the country's nuclear weapons program. President Trump also issued a less strident warning to our trading partners today to a somewhat friendlier audience in the White House that included a business owner from Mesa. Pat Pavletti brings us a story from our Washington bureau. When Andrew Medway's family first founded Lanternland Lighting in Arizona 40 years ago, they could have never imagined that it would one day score them a ticket to the Capitol. But that's exactly what happened today as Medway was one of 50 representatives invited to the White House for the Made in America product showcase. We never expected to be in Washington in, in the White House in a million years. Uh, totally out of the blue. We have no idea why or how we were selected. We're thrilled to be here, obviously, but it came completely out of the blue. We're lucky we didn't dismiss it because we thought it might be a hoax. But it was no hoax that brought Medway from his office in Mesa to the presidential residence. Lanternland Lighting was chosen to represent Arizona at the Made in America product showcase, where companies from all 50 states were given a chance to show off products ranging from cowboy boots to cotton towels to moon pies. But one thing all these companies had in common, their products are made in the USA. These are, you, you know, these are really a high quality product. They're made in the United States. They're going to last forever. And it's something that we believe in tremendously. Domestic manufacturing is something that President Trump took great pride in at the event and something that he vowed to protect against foreign competition. The European Union has been very tough on the United States, but they're coming in to see me on Wednesday. 
and we'll see if we can work something out. And otherwise, we'll have to do something with respect to the millions of cars that they send in every year. But Simon Lester, associate director at the Center for Trade Policy Studies at the Cato Institute, warned that Trump's proposed answer, tariffs, will hurt consumers adding thousands of dollars to the price of a car. I think those are the estimates I've seen um, to, to buy a car. So yes, you know, there are certain car producers who, who will benefit from the higher prices, but it's all going to be paid for by somebody else, and that's us, the consumer. At the White House, Pat Pobletti, Cronkite News. For nearly three decades, it was a part of Arizona. Soon, you can own part of a historic dam that was once part of Tempe Town Lake. Coming up on Cronkite News, we dive into what's being done with the barrier remnants and how the city of Tempe plans to make a little money. Plus, move over Paris and New York, how resources in Arizona are helping young local designers to put their stamp on the fashion world. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS PBS, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. The 2018 election season has arrived. Join us for primary and general election debates. Right here, meet the candidates and hear their positions. Arizona Horizon, your source for what matters most this election season, only on Arizona PBS. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. Arizona is not typically thought of when it comes to the fashion industry, but resources are growing for local designers. Reporter Andrew Christensen went to the Fashion and Business Resource Innovation Center to experience the design incubator. I went to Fabric, a fashion incubator that goes beyond just regular design classes. It's a place for designers to develop their clothing brand and market it all over Arizona. Sewing, one of the classes designers can take at Fabric, a fashion incubator that provides fashionistas with materials and consultation to establish a fashion business. We haven't really found another fashion incubator exactly like this in the United States. Um, this has more than just the education and incubation. It's got all of the services. Designers are able to manufacture their clothes at the fashion incubator at no minimums, whether they want to manufacture 20 or 200 clothing items. Fabric also has office spaces for fashion businesses, for styling, screen printing, photography, hair, makeup, and event coordination, in addition to a sourcing library to find fabric. You might want a green shirt, purple pants, or an orange skirt. Here at Fabric, they say, so what? The Arizona Apparel Foundation is the part of Fabric that gives scholarships and office space to help designers' fashion lines emerge. So it's a huge opportunity for an emerging designer to be able to take their idea and make it into a reality. Serenity Favela is one of the scholarship winners who participates in Fabric's design classes for kids. I was really excited because um, I, I know how to make certain things, but it's really simple. It's not, super, it's not like you would see at stores. It's not as nice. 
So this, I thought this would be a great opportunity. Fabric says it also seeks to help new Arizona designers compete in the fashion industry by helping to market their products. I feel like Arizona is ripe for this because we've got fashion weeks here, we've got hundreds of local designers and brands who need these resources, and I'm sure there's hundreds in every state. So this is something that every state could really need. Fabric will be hosting a fashion show in September called Cultivate that features designers who won the Arizona Apparel Foundation Scholarship. In the Broadcast Center, Andrew Christensen, Cronkite News. When Tempe Town Lake was drained and a new steel dam was installed, the city of Tempe decided to get rid of the old dam's waste in a unique way. Reporter Nicole Hernandez is at Tempe Town Lake with information on how you might be able to help recycle the material. Tempe officials decided to repurpose the old dam by cutting it up into 110 sheets and 13 rolls of rubber. The material is now being auctioned off to the public. Instead of throwing the several tons of rubber in the landfill, Tempe has used it for projects around the city, including parks, art, and erosion control. Recently, I mean, we couldn't find any more use of it, so we tried to sell it to public, and I'm sure somebody's going to come up with some great ideas to use it. The material is hard, heavy, and durable. It's a lot of rubber. Uh, big sheets, like I said, 13 by 13, you, you, you probably would have to have five, six guys to lift this whole thing. But it has many practical uses. Some farmers could use it for horse stables, uh, car washing, uh, you know, sites where you deal with a lot of mud. I mean, this is a hard surface, it's easy, easy to wash. The city will ultimately decide who receives the rubber based on an application and bidding process. I mean, it's a, it's a great product and, and we hopefully find a sustainable solution for that so we'll serve somebody well. This is the second rubber dam that Tempe has repurposed before changing to steel. Now if you're interested you can put your name in for just one or every piece of the rubber. Bidding is online and ends August 8th. In Tempe, Nicole Hernandez, Cronkite News. Each passing year more people are landing in Arizona. And with more arrivals comes added innovation. Coming up on Cronkite News, how the Arizona Airport of the Year is taking flight into the future. And what does it feel like right now? Well, in Phoenix, it feels like 114. We'll have your seven-day forecast coming up soon. I'm Matt Barry, ESPN Sports Center anchor and graduate of ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. With its bachelor's and master's degrees in sports journalism, the Cronkite School is preparing the next generation of sports journalists to tell stories that matter, stories that excite, inspire, and inform. Cronkite immerses students in covering sports at all levels in one of the country's top sports markets. It's this hands-on experience under the guidance of award-winning sports media veterans that shape the top journalist of tomorrow. If you're looking for one show that tells you what happened that day in the world of business, it's NBR. We saw a classic chip wreck. Nordstrom's opening stores. Triple digit gains. Crude climbs. We're there to help our audience find new investment ideas. The market still has room to go up. Nightly Business Report is the longest running business television program in history. Weeknights at 1030 on Arizona PBS. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people. To see those kids drink clean water for the first time, it's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. With the excessive heat warning in place until 8 p.m. on Wednesday, we should all be cautious about going outdoors. Amanda's in the Weather Center with a look at how hot the rest of the week will be. 
Well, it's official in just a very short amount of time. This is our highs today, but we have hit 114. That is our average high. So we hit the record here. As you can see, our other highs that we're probably going to get Grand Canyon is 91. Not too bad, but when you go over to uh, down here over, you can see triple digits all the way into the south. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's important to remember that when we have a really, really hot days that we probably have an air quality alert and this is for unhealthy sensitive groups. So if you have any sort of respiratory issue, make sure that you stay indoors as much as possible. So we're taking a look at our seven day forecast. As you can see, it's continuously going to stay hot. Looks like we might hit 117 tomorrow and then as we continue 116, 115, it gets sunny. We don't have a lot of cool down at night, as you can tell a lot of the times in Maricopa County, it's the urban heat island effect, so it still continues to stay hot at night. In the Weather Center, Amanda Mason, Cronkite Weather. Mesa is becoming known as the innovation hub of Arizona. When it comes to new aviation technologies, the Falcon Field Airport plays a huge role. Reporter Jordan Daphnis visited the airport and found that though the airport is proud of where it's going, it hasn't forgotten where it's come from. Maybe it's the 325 days of sunshine that makes aviation companies want to call Falcon Field Airport home, or the competitive aviation and engineering schools nearby, or maybe it's the airport's rich history. Planes have been coming in and out of Falcon Field Airport for more than 75 years. It was actually built uh, during World War II in 1941 before the United States actually entered World War II. On site is a commemorative Air Force Museum and on Thursdays you can find Jeffrey Cook there leading museum tours. This airplane uh, was delivered as I mentioned in March of 1945. Part of his job includes meeting with veterans and recording their oral histories. I've done mostly World War II veterans as far as the interviews are concerned. These gentlemen are typically in their 90s. All of these pieces come together to make the airport what it is today and what it will be in the future. So we're able to not only uh, reflect upon and remember our great history, but it also gives us incentive to move forward to what the wave of the future is for aviation. The airport's director says that incentive to move towards the future is what's bringing in new aerospace companies like AQST Space Systems. All the growth will be out of Mesa. Uh, this is our uh, headquarters. Soto says their company is taking the aviation work that's always been done to new heights and even new planets. This is what we've always done. It's just that we've done it before in a two-dimensional world. Now we're going to be doing it in a three-dimensional world. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's the exploration, it's the settlement in space. We're going to be constructing cities. AQST Space Systems is actually just one of 1,200 aerospace companies in Mesa. In downtown Phoenix, Jordan Daphnis, Cronkite News. Some of us are going, dream about going to outer space and walking on the moon. But have you ever thought about what it would smell like? Coming up on Cronkite News, scientists have found a way to create smells from above. We'll show you how these galactic scents landed here on Earth. I like working for Cronkite News because it gives us the opportunity to find a different angle on the same stories that every other news outlet is covering across Arizona. As students, we have the opportunity to cover issues in all across the state of Arizona. It gives me a good chance to sharpen my skills, improve my skills, learn the techniques in, in a newsroom and in the programs and teamwork and technology, getting me prepared for the real world. And at the same time, I think we do a great job, make some great stories, do great journalism for the city of Phoenix and the state of Arizona. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. Join us each weekday at 5.30 and 10 as we bring you the top newsmakers who impact the state. We cover the stories in depth that shape and affect our local communities, and we take the time to ensure that all voices are equally heard. For more than 30 years, Arizona Horizon has been your voice and your source for what matters most, right here on Arizona PBS. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Exploring, it's the lifeblood of the mission. Human beings are a curious bunch. What are we going to see when we get really close? Wow. 
Just because an idea is crazy, it's not necessarily wrong. We were on our way. You don't get anywhere until you've tested the limits. That carries an intensity you can't imagine. You could hear people just, whoa. Oh my God, absolutely spectacular. It's a rush. We ask a lot of our heroes. We are at a remarkable moment. We're going farther than any exploration ever has. It is possible that one day you could buy candles that smell like the moon, all thanks to Arizona State University research team. Reporter Emily Richardson explains why they decided to try and make sense of space. You could be transported back in time or you know, across the world to a memory by the simple smell of something. Researchers at the Arizona State University School of Life Sciences started the Five Senses in Space project to expand people's understanding of outer space beyond just sight. Their first project was studying Sagittarius B2, a gas cloud near the center of the Milky Way. They found that the chemical in the cloud is the same one that gives rum its smell and raspberries their taste, and decided to turn it into a lip balm. It's just convenient that the center of our galaxy smells like something quite pleasant, and it's a nice story that you can wrap up and tell people. I would really like to see us create more things like the lip balm, something that's really engaging that you can pass out to people and give them a quick little fact that they can take with them and go pass along to their friends and their family. Their next mission is teaming up with ASU Smell Lab to capture the smell of the moon. We call it the sampling unit or the smell unit, where we do have the air sampler that we can actually collect any chemical volatiles from any smelly sort of source. We've come to them with the challenge of, can you tell us what a meteorite smells like? And so we're working on finding out ways to try and capture those scents. To Tanya Harrison, the director of research, this is more than just capturing smells. It's a way to help people connect to outer space. And it's something so simple, but it seems to have resonated with so many people, at least the story about what the center of our galaxy smells like. And that's really exciting. So I want to see more of that go on and get people more excited about what the rest of the universe is like. In Tempe, Emily Richardson, Cronkite News. Tanya Harrison hopes that once they have captured the smell of the moon, that one of the remaining moonwalkers will come and tell them if it actually smells like the moon smells. And now the lip balm may not be on the market just yet. NASA is working to make history and touch the sun. The space agency will launch a probe next month that will circle the sun 24 times. The probe will have a specially designed 5-inch coating of carbon composite solar shields to help it withstand the heat and the atmosphere around the sun. The spacecraft will study how heat moves through the sun's atmosphere. It is expected to be in orbit for seven years. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, a new study looks at adults with autism and how phones and computers are helping empower the disabled. That's on the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour. How drinking alcohol during pregnancy could be the cause of many more children with disabilities than previously thought. That's Monday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Yupa's Thai Kitchen in Tempe features fresh, authentic Thai cuisine and vegetarian Thai dishes served in a homeland style decor atmosphere. Open for lunch and dinner seven days a week. Information at 480 839 0576.
American Masters plays ball with baseball Hall of Famer Ted Williams. The kid. The thumper. The splendid splinter. He was obsessed with hitting. He is the greatest hitter that ever lived. Experience is amazing story when the legendary